Hello friends, so again, it seems like we're having some technical difficulties and I started without it actually recording. So um, today we're doing pages 43 and 46 together. And then you are going to be showing me number nine on page 46. That's kind of your independent work for today. So you can either show me on the live or you can show me on Seesaw. Um, as you can see, I did some work, not realizing it wasn't recording. So this example, if you just read it, it tells you the answer anyway. So it just talks about how 1,729 would round down to 1,700. It shows you why with the number line. And then it also shows you why 1,065 would round up to 1,100. And I just did some markings to show you. These blue lines are halfway between each of the end numbers. So this one is not... Uh, halfway yet, so we round down this one's past halfway so obviously we can see that we round up and then for this one i just quickly started talking about a hint that i taught some of my third graders last year so if you were in my class last year you might already know this but the problem says smallville has 12,548 people registered to vote to the nearest thousand how many people are registered to vote now for this one as you can see um i did not make a place value chart because i'm teaching you this trick so you have to circle the place value that you're talking about. So in this instance, we're talking about the thousands. And then you underline the number in the place value to its right. So for this case, we're underlining the hundreds. And it is, in fact, a five here. And we know the rule. Five or more, we're rounding up. Or four or less, we're staying where we are. So because this is four, five or more, we are rounding up. We are bumping this two up to a three. So that means to the nearest hundred... And I'm sorry, thousand, not hundred. There are thirteen thousand, and remember, everything after that place value circle turns into a zero after. So there are about thirteen thousand people. registered to vote so if that trick helps you let me know um we'll continue doing that probably into tomorrow as well so if you have any questions here make sure you pause and join us on google meet and i'll be happy to help wherever i can if you're ready we can turn to page 44 and we have two problems here so the first one says a company makes wooden golf tees. One year they make 380,285 tees. To the nearest 10,000, how many tees do they make? So again, we're just going to use that same hint I just taught you on the first one. We're going to have 380,285. And this also, this hint works if you do it in the place value chart too. It's just a matter of what works better for you. So. To the nearest 10,000. So we have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. So I'm going to circle my eight and I'm going to underline my zero because I need this to tell me whether or not I'm rounding this eight up or staying the same. So we have a zero here. So we have less than four. So we're going to stay the same. So this problem, the answer is 380,000. So the company... made about 380,000 t's because remember everything to the right of our number circled becomes a zero once we're done rounding so this company made about 380,000 t's so now moving on A website streams 264,398 movies to its customers in one year. To the nearest 10, how many movies does the website stream? So again, I can make it in the place value chart to show you how it works in the place value chart, but the hint works just the same. So we're going to have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. We have ones, tens, hundreds thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. 
So we're going to have 264,398. Now we're rounding to the nearest 10 here. So we're going to circle our 10s and underline our 1s because that's the place value to our right. And this 8 is 5 or more, so we know this number is going to get bumped. But if, that, if this number gets bumped, it would become a 10. So that means, friends, that this 10 is going to also bump up this 100 because we can't have ten, a 10 in the 10s place. We have to make some exchanges. So this would become a 0, and this would become a 4 because we can't have 10 10s here. Remember, 10 10s, ten, we have to cash those in for the 100 because 10 10s ten is 100. So this one gets a little tricky, so it's good that we made the place value chart here because we're able to see how the place values exchange. So that means that 264,400 is our answer. So we're circling letter C because when we use this eight to bump up this nine, we can't keep a 10 here. We can't have a 10 in the tens column. So it's very important that you're paying attention to that and making exchanges when you need to, okay? And then Elin chooses C as the correct answer. How did she get that answer? Um, she knew, well, there's multiple ways she could do this. She could do the exchange, like we just did in the place value chart. But you can also think of it as 264,398. We know isn't really close at all to 265,000. It's closer to 264,000 because this 398 isn't to that 500 yet, like we've talked about previously this week, right? So she chose C because, sorry, I'm not sure why we're shaking and I'm not sure why you can't even see. <laughs> sorry about that. So she chose C because she knew 264,398 was closer to 264,400 than to 264,390. So she rounded up. Again, that one was tricky, so make sure if you have any questions, you ask in the Google Meet, okay? Okay, so moving on, we have number four. The distance four hot air balloons travel are listed below. Leah rounds the distance as the balloons travel to the nearest ten. Which distance does not round to 6,550? So we're going to look through these numbers together and we're just going to write them off to the side. So we have 6,559 and we're rounding to the nearest 10. So we're going to circle our 10s, underline the place value to its right. So the number 6,559, there's a 9 in the 1, so that means we need to bump up this 5 to a six, so that means that this number would round to 6,560. And this question is asking which distance does not round to 6,550 kilometers, and we know that A, in fact, does not. But we're going to check the rest just to make sure. So we have the number 6,545 rounding to the nearest 10. We know this 5 would bump up this 4, so it would be 6,550, so we know this one is good. This one, we would have a 4 in the 10s and a 7 in the 1s, so we know this 7 would bump this 4 again to a 5, so it would give us 6,550, so again, this one's good. And then same with this one, we're going to circle our 10s, underline our 1s. This 3 doesn't bump up this 5, 
but that just means that this 3 becomes a 0 because everything to the right of our place value turns into a 0. So we would have 6,550, and that's how we know that A is the only one that doesn't round to 6,550. That one was, sounded really wordy, but all you had to do was make sure all but one rounded to 6,550 if you were rounding to the nearest 10. So, number five. And friends, make sure you're trying these on your own before you check in here. Phoebe's Bait and Tackle sells 102,278 live worms. To the nearest thousand, how many worms does Phoebe's Bait and Tackle sell that month? So we're going to use the trick we learned earlier in these pages. We have the number 102,278. We're rounding to the nearest thousands. We're going to circle our thousands, underline the place value to its right. This two is um, four or less. So we're going to stay at 102,000. But then all of these will become zero. So it would become 102,000 because everything to its right becomes a zero. So for this one, it would be B. And then number six is a little tricky, so I want you to do this one alongside with me. But we need to determine whether the original number is rounded to the nearest hundred or the nearest thousand to make their new number. So if we look at this one, the original number was 1,445. And then the new number was 1,400. We can see that it was rounded to the nearest 100 because if we look, we have the 1 and we have the 4. And then everything after this 4 became a 0. This 4 is in the hundreds place, so we rounded to the nearest 100. And we're going to use that same strategy for all of these. So we have the number 12,500. It was rounded to 13,000. Was it rounded to the nearest hundred or the nearest thousand? Well, we can look. If the numbers change in the thousands place, and then everything after the thousands place is zeros. So in this case, this two becomes a three, and so we can see we rounded up to 13,000. So we're rounding to the nearest thousand. And same strategy for this one. We have 29,607. This one changes to 30,000. So obviously we can see 29,607, we're already over that 500, we're over the halfway. So they rounded up to the next thousand for this one, because if you look here, none of the numbers match up, but that's because we were at 29. So if we're rounding to the nearest thousand, the six would bump this up to 30. So we rounded to the nearest thousand. And for this last one, we have 341,389. So if we look and try to match them up, we have 3, a 4, a 1, and then a 3 and a 4 are different. So we can see that everything after this hundreds place here turned to a 0. So we know that we are here rounding to the nearest hundred. Because remember, every place value, every time you round to the nearest place value of whatever you're rounding to, everything to the right becomes a 0. So for this one, we have a 400. So you round to the nearest hundred. This one we have 13,000. Everything after the thousands is a zero, so we round it to the nearest thousand. Same thing with this one. Everything after the, the thousands is a zero, so we know it's a thousands. And then for this one, everything after the hundreds is a zero, so we know it's the nearest hundred. So that's a nice little trick you can use to kind of check your work too. And again, if you have any questions, make sure that you are asking in the Google Meet where they are right now helping friends out. So, number seven looks trickier than it is. So, A is an unknown number, and when you round A to the nearest thousand, you get 21,000. When you round it to the nearest hundred, you get 20,500. So, that means it's somewhere in between here and here, okay? But if we're rounding to the nearest hundred, we go down to 20,500. So if we're looking at these two boxes as options, we know that A has to go here because if we put it here, it wouldn't round to the 20,500. It would round to the 20,700 that's right here, right? So we know that it has to go here because we can see 
that it's obvious you're going to round to the 21,000 because it's over that halfway mark. But we know it rounds to 20,500 when we're rounding to the nearest 100. So just out of these two boxes, we need to pick the one closest to here. So that leaves us with A going there. And the last one we're going to do together, we have round 5,563 to the nearest 1,000, to the nearest 100, and the nearest 10. So we're going to do that first. So we have the number 5,563, and I'm going to write that three times. Because we're rounding it to three different place values. And then I'm going to leave room here for my answer. So this first one we're running to the nearest thousand. So I'm going to circle my thousands place. And I'm going to underline my hundreds place. So remember, five or more in the place value to its right, we bump this up. If it's four or less, we stay in rest. So for this one, we have a five. So this five is going to bump up to a six. And then everything to its right becomes a zero. So this is to the nearest Thousand. I'm just going to write thousand under here so I know. And this is thousands. And now this one we need to round to the nearest hundred. So I'm going to circle my hundred, underline my tens. And then again, if this number to its right is five or more, we bump up. Here it's a six, so we're going to bump up again. So this would become five thousand six. And then two zeros, so five thousand six hundred is to the nearest hundred and then to the nearest ten we're going to circle our tens underline our ones this three is not five or more so it's going to stay the same so to the nearest ten we're going to have five thousand five hundred and sixty so that's part one of this question we only got to here. So now we're gonna do the rest of it. So suppose you can pay a $5,563 bill with a rounded amount. Which place value would you round to? So which place value would you want to round to to get if you only have this $5,563 bill and you wanna pay with a rounded amount, which place value would you round to? I would say if you have to pay a bill, you don't want to round to the 5560 because then you still owe them $3. And you don't really want to pay them 6000 because that's way more than what you owe them. So if you had a if you or if I had a $5,563 bill, and had to pay with a rounded amount I'd pay 5600 obviously that's over what the price was we only had to pay 5563 technically but you don't want to give them the 500, 5060 because you'd owe them $3 and that's not okay. So suppose you win the prize and choose to win a rounded amount. What would you want to round to? Well, for this one, this one's different. Which place value would you want to round to if you won the money? You would obviously want to round to the biggest one, right? You want to get the biggest amount of money for your buck. So if I won... I'd want to round the total to 6,000 so I get the most money, right? And I'm just gonna write a little dollar sign for money. But that way you get the most money. So if we get a chance to choose a rounded amount, we're gonna wanna round to the nearest thousand if we win that money because we're gonna get more money out of it. So now, what I want you to do is do number nine on your own and then either show me on Seesaw or live on Google Meet. You need to choose a five digit number that rounds to a six digit number 
and tell what place you round to and why you chose it. So what place did you round to and why you chose your five digit number? Okay, so it looks wordy, but just think of your place value. If it helps, make a place value chart and make sure you show me either on Seesaw or on Google Meet. Again, this wraps up our workbook pages for lesson three. So if you have any questions, please, please, please ask them today because tomorrow we will be doing an I ready lesson. So again, show me number nine and then you are good to move on to I ready.